Hello there and welcome to another Python tutorial. This one builds on top of the previous video that I've shared regarding building your own stock screener. And of course, as the name suggests of the video, it's going to be all about the peg ratio. It is a ratio mentioned in the book One Up on Wall Street, written by Peter Lynch, one of the famous investors, uh, especially one that had very good results at the end of the last century. And if you've seen my videos, then you know that I am I want them to be more practical and less theoretical, and I will attempt to do the same in this video as well. But I need to start a little bit more into um, the theoretical part and also my approach on building a uh, script that would help us to kind of calculate this ratio for all 500 companies in the S&P 500. But of course, you can use the script to calculate the peg ratio for any company as long as the data is available, right? So the P ratio, that is kind of one of the, um, the different pieces when it comes to the peg ratio. The P ratio is something that is easy to, to get. The growth was a bit difficult one uh, to, to figure out how, how what is the best way to extract that. So the first thing that I did was I thought, okay, let me take one example. Um, I'll take Intuit and I'll search for, let's say, just Yahoo Finance. And Yahoo Finance provides this analysis part where there's certain information about the future, right? There's earnings estimate. You can see how that is expected to roll forward. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit. Um, then you can take a look at the revenue estimates, the earnings, also history, but also estimates, the EPS trend and so on. So there's, there is some forward looking data. And what I did was I used some of this information as you'll see a bit later in the video as a metric for the future growth. And here it's a bit more simplified, but in the book he mentioned that it should be also a sustainable, sustainable growth. Because for example, if we take a look at the last couple of years, we had certain events such as the pandemic and some supply chain issues. And now the war between Russia and Ukraine, um, or maybe the invasion is more correct term. And these events have impact on certain companies that hopefully are temporarily, but normally there comes a period when there's a rebound. And we saw that, especially with the pandemic. So if we take a look at the year when, when this rebound happens, we have a huge growth in terms of earnings. But that's not sustainable. And I wanted to mention that explicitly here because it is mentioned in the book, but of course in Wikipedia it's kind of simplified. So this annual growth is not for the next year, but kind of more sustainable, more long term. So what I decided to do is I wanted to take the, the growth that's coming a few years down the line. So now that I have that idea in mind, all I need to do is extract the data. So extract the P ratio. Uh, extract the expected growth, compare the two, and that's it. Before I do that, I had one more challenge. It's again, a little bit theoretical, but it's very important to mention. And that is, imagine there are two companies that are identical in terms of the earnings. They both earn a hundred thousand US dollars per year. And so exactly identical in terms of operations. So the same risk and the share price um, whatever it is, the market cap is at 1 million. So we have market price 1 million, earnings 100,000. So the PE ratio based on the formula is 10. But what if one company has half a million cash more than the other? We would not see that in our PE ratio, right? If on the other side, um, hypothetically, the company that has half a million more in cash was priced at, at one and a half million, well, then the PE ratio becomes 15. And using the traditional conclusion based on the PE ratio, higher PE means more expensive. But in this case, that, that's not really the case. It's more expensive because there is more cash and it's priced properly. So I decided to take a bit of a different route to adjust what is the price. What I did was I took out all the cash and debt that the company has. So I'm assuming that I'm buying the operations of the business without these few variables that are out there. So assuming that there's no cash, there's no debt, and I compare that to the earnings, and I also have the future growth. So 
I'll upload this file so you can also go through it on your own. Um, of course, majority of it comes from the previous um, video where I have a lot of these. Um, this was actually the, the initial file. So I, I had some idea on how to create a stock screener. So I shared that. And now there's this PE ratio to growth file that I'll also add that you can, of course, access it on your own where I'm taking some of these variables to calculate the, the enterprise value. I have the net income of the company to calculate the, the adjusted price to earnings ratio. And then I have the forecasted growth. Now, there's also dividend yield. And I want to point that out as it is mentioned in the uh, book as well. It is mentioned as, I'm not sure actually if I search here for dividend, probably I won't find anything. Oh, there it is. The ratio is appropriate to measuring companies without high growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one is, it, it's not really mentioning that. Um, the book clearly mentions that because the earnings of the company can either be paid out as dividend or be reinvested. And in which case you get future earnings growth, right? So you can have more growth if you pay less dividends or you can have more dividends, but then the growth is, is, is lower. So in the book, he's comparing the P ratio to the combined, so the sum of the expected future growth of the earnings and the dividend yield. Hence here, I also have the dividend yield. And of course, I, I ran this for all the S&P 500 and I get the results for all companies except in the cases when there is no forecasted growth data available um, on, on Yahoo Finance. And maybe I'll just scroll because that's, I think, the, the new part compared to the, the previous video that is significantly different. It is the estimate. So you'll notice that I'm using the same library. I get the earnings estimate and then I get the expected growth between the two years available. So for example, in the case of Intuit, it would be um, the estimates for both two years. And then we have the Maybe we'll go back a little bit. So we're looking for the earnings estimate. It's probably up here. Yep. Yeah. So I get the average one because of course, analysts make a suggestion, but some of them can be more accurate than others, but on average, so I get a 15.99 and I subtract the, or I divide that with a 13.78 minus one. That is the actual expected earnings growth two years down the line. But again, that's a bit, in my opinion, better estimate for what's sustainable. And once I run that, of course, I stored all the, all the data. So I have the ticker, I have the market cap, cash that, all of the information that we discussed. And then I calculate the P ratio. Then I have the dividend plus the growth, and then I get this back ratio. And then I stored it as a, as a summary file. I renamed it so it's a bit more clear. And I have all of these numbers in millions. So the first part, everything is in millions. Now the file, it's easy to, to understand if you understand the peg ratio. So I, I want to walk you through, through it a little bit as if you are decide to use this in the future, then you'll get a similar outcome. I'm going to filter a couple of things. First, if there's negative growth forecasted, then of course, in this case, as you can see, the peg ratio is negative, which makes no sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter. And this is also something that we can incorporate within the script. If the growth is, is not, for example, between zero and maybe we can do between zero and 200 or 200%, because to be honest, if there's 600% expected growth, it could be also that uh, there's again, these events that have huge impact. All right, so that's the first part. The second part, is if there's negative P, again, this would not work. So P ratio, but this one, I would probably just set greater than zero. And maybe it's, we could also do it the same way because if also if there's a, a P ratio of, of 200, that means that the earnings are very low. So even a small increase in absolute value would have an, a, a huge forecasted growth in terms of earnings. So here we could also filter between say zero and let's say 150, that's already quite high, but just as an example, right? So, and here, of course we can sort, I think I've already sort, sorted this before. Yeah. 
So these are, for example, the companies ranked from cheapest based on, on this ratio. And I want to point out that based on Peter Lynch and, and his, at least that part of the book, a fairly valued company has a peg that is equal to one. And the lower the peg is, the better. So if we take a look at the S&P 500, then we have, in this case, 22 companies that meet that criteria, that is, that are fairly valued, again, solely based on that criteria. And so I'll note here 22. And the rest, of course, one is quite close, but we have 193 that meet, again, these criteria that are, say, overvalued or fairly valued. So as a percentage, maybe I'll do that as well. We have roughly 90% being overvalued or the S&P. So it's quite kind of, it gives an indication of whether s and is um, overvalued. Now, of course, this doesn't capture all 500 companies mainly because a lot have been um, hidden based on these two criteria, but these are anyway, interesting companies Funny enough, I have uh, valued this one and I got to the conclusion that it is undervalued PVH. But I mean, it's it's a good starting point. Of course, this is not the basis on which decisions should be made. It's just a starting point to have some ideas and to um, kind of have a, maybe a, a, as a stock screener, a, an idea of a good company that could be a good investment and then actually start with doing the homework. Apologies that I have not been uploading that much. Uh, I actually have another channel where I've been a little bit more active. That is purely in the finance, um, I'd say, sphere, um, more into valuation. So I'll leave a link in the description for that if you want to check it out. And if you're interested in that, well, feel free to subscribe there. And let me know what you think about this. And if you have other ideas as well. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.